Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Senators Casey and Senators Menendez for leading on this extraordinary bill and the broad bipartisan support that it has. I know Senator Menendez and I have both been uh, mayors in our communities. And when there is no crisis, we know intimately the challenges that so many of our public servants face. In times where we do not see pandemics, our firefighters put their lives on their line, our police officers put their lives on the line, our teachers do extraordinary above and beyond the call of duty. Indeed, our communities are strong because of these dedicated public workers. Well, in a time of a crisis, we see that our teachers are rising to the challenge, working to keep their students engaged, even though they are now miles apart. I hear stories of teachers riding around, going out to even visit students, keeping their distance, but ensuring that their students get the support that they need. Our firefighters are out there now, putting their lives even at more of a risk, putting their cells on the line to help their communities. Police officers answering calls without hesitation, despite the great risk it puts on themselves and their families when they go home. And so many of our other public servants who are working diligently to keep our communities running, to keep our states strong, to meet a crisis, to try to help folks stay healthy, stay safe. Without hesitation across New Jersey, across all of our 50 states, we are seeing more clearly the heroic actions of people who are leading in a time of crisis. But as was said by my colleagues across the country, states are being hit by significantly defining, the declining revenues and extraordinarily increasing costs. We are already seeing early projections, as it was discussed by my colleagues, even independent rating agencies like Moody's are talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in deficits for our state and local governments. My own governor has estimated New Jersey's projected gap caused by those declining revenues, those extremely rising costs, to be somewhere between 20 and $30 billion. Due to these shortfalls, without immediate action from Congress, state and local governments will be forced to make deep cuts to public services, including laying off folks who are not just essential in word, but make the difference often between life or death, safety or crisis in our communities. These would the work, be the workers that would be laid off at the time that we need them the most. Not only do these vital public servants do a job protecting our communities from educating our kids to supporting our neighbors, but cuts like these actually will aggravate and deepen the overall economic crisis facing our country. Independent rating agencies and others say that cuts like these will actually prolong our economic crisis and the time needed for recovery. This is not the time for half measures. This is the time to act at the scale that the crisis demands. Federal government needs to be providing a robust, accurately tailored response to this crisis by funding our state and local governments in a way that prioritizes those areas that have been hit the hardest. The SMART Act does exactly that. It is a bipartisan bill. It is thoughtful. It is tailored narrowly to fit this crisis. The SMART Act is a common sense approach that will make sure that the help is going to where it's needed most, to our hardest hit communities and states, and will help to ensure that those workers that we hail with our words, firefighters, police officers, and teachers, that we support them with our actions as well, for they are out there right now supporting us. No state should go bankrupt fighting this virus because of this virus. No state should go bankrupt because we refuse at the federal government to support them. No essential public worker should lose their job because of this crisis, because Congress 
was not stepping up to lead through it. There's no time to waste. As was said by my colleague, we have folks in my state that are putting together their budgets right now. As we saw from my colleague from Louisiana, they're already accounting for the need to cut. We've already seen hundreds of thousands of public workers being laid off. The delay has costs. And when you're talking about first responders, the delays could have costs that are hard to imagine. I encourage my colleagues to see this as what it is. It is the accurately tailored response. It is a bipartisan bill. It is what our nation needs right now. I encourage my colleagues in the Senate to work to get this to the floor so that we can vote on it, pass on it, and get it through Congress to the President's desk so that we can avoid these layoffs and help to endure the storm that we're in and ultimately overcome the severity of its ravages.